This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen. I'm the president of World Ministries International, as well as Eagles Saving Nations. I want to welcome all of you that have tuned in to the warning program, whether you're watching it on television or social media, listening to it on radio or shortwave, welcome. In the studio with me is apostolic leader Joe Moniki, just returned from the nation of Kenya, East Africa. Uh, Joe, welcome back. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. It's wonderful. Every time I come to your place, I feel I, I'm home. Well, you are home. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, I feel at home in Kenya because I first lived in Kenya from 87, yes. and we are still going back and forth to Kenya. Amen. But, you know, I lived there from 87 to 95, literally lived there. That's where I resided. Wow. Yeah. So I went around the world from Nairobi, Kenya. And now, as you know, you've been to some of my offices. Yes. We're still in Kenya. Oh, you still have offices there. And so, I mean, uh, I still have people representing me, like Dr. Michael Hiodo. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yes. Uh, yes Dr. Yeah. Hiodo, I, I was him with him this time. morning. I met him last time here. Yeah, I was with him this morning oh. at uh, 7 a.m. in Bellevue, Washington. Okay, he lives there now? No, no, no. But uh, he's there now. He's going back to Kenya next week. Wow. wow. But... Uh, Anyway, uh, and then Pastor Tobias Nyamwaya, uh, he's, he's actually here. He, was, he worked for me in 87 in Kenya, still the director of our Bible schools in Nairobi. Yes. But anyway, I, um, Pastor Joe and I go way back, and uh, we both have a burden for Kenya as well as other nations. We have a mm. burden for America. Yes, yeah, very. And so you just returned from Kenya, yes. and so uh, why don't you share with the audience watching and listening, what did you do in Kenya? And first of all, when did you go and when did you return? Oh, uh, I, I believe I was here before I went to back to Kenya. You were. And, uh, you know, this was my third time in Kenya, this time, because there are some things I'm doing there, little things God has opened for me. And also, I have a, a very big crusade coming in November 10, 11, and 12 in Jakarada's ground. Okay. So I've been meeting with a lot of bishops and pastors and having overnight meetings and also open airs. And I want to do 12 mini crusades before the big crusade because I'm hosting evangelist David Isaac. He's a Jew. He has never been in Kenya. He works with miracles. And uh, we, so we'll have a conference for Friday and Saturday. Before the crusade, then we go to the crusade. And also me and uh, Apostle Martin, who is my spiritual son, we hosted two big meetings. Uh, we, he felt that we need to honor the top clergy fathers of the nation. So we hosted a, 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 a lunch in Serena Hotel. And a hundred of them came, exactly the number we wanted. Wow. And they blessed us because we felt... Because some are getting old, it's good to have uh, the blessing of the fathers, and thank God they came. And also we had uh, two days uh, in KICC, uh, Ting Ting restaurant. We rented a big hall where we could put like 700, 800, and uh, we had uh, two days of the throne room experience. And also this 25, 26, uh, we are bringing it the first time in Seattle because we believe it's the time people need to operate from the throne. We have operated for in order for a long time. But you know, when you get translated in heaven, what you see is the, the altar. And there are three levels of the altar. There is bronze, there is silver, but there is a golden altar, which always is before you get to the throne room to access the throne room. So we had two days of the throne room. And now it's coming to Seattle for two days, uh, uh, next week for two days and so we, I hosted a fairly many meetings. Before I came, I had uh, like 500 bishops and pastors. That was uh, uh, that was on third of uh, that of uh, of this month, and uh, because we are preparing this, because we are calling it the glory revealed. Because don't forget 1987, when God called me from the business, and to 1988 He revealed His glory. How? And I shared a bit in your. Uh, telecast last time about Enoch Elijah people. Yes. And uh, it's very interesting. Before I went to Kenya, I shared that here a bit and also at Mike's. I've never seen Enoch. I've been with Elijah. I've been with Paul in heaven. Translation, which I've been 
take a several times, like 38 times. But this time, I saw Enoch walking in, in, in a room, in a meeting, and he was a speaker, and I said, I think I was with him. So there's uh, something we are calling, uh, in fact, today I was leading Isaiah 66, and the Lord said that heaven is his throne, but the high is the footstool. But you know, and I had a new song, say, God, I, I don't want to go down, I want to go up to access the throne. And immediately he opened Isaiah 66 for me <laughs> this morning, it was very, it's one of my books I like. So the Lord has been doing great things. And also, I have a passion to do a three days, September 1, 2, and 3. We were supposed to use a big charge, but because there were some people I was bringing, but uh, two of them did not get the visa. And uh, so we might do it in a small way. Maybe you can come and share one night, but we might use a, a different venue. But uh, I believe that September is a key month because for long enough, the church, many churches like now it's in Kenya, was chilling about we need to know there's salvation, there's baptism of the Holy Ghost, there's baptism of the water, but the great is what John said when he spoke in Matthew 3, 11, that me, I baptize with water, but the one coming behind him will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. And literally, I saw like uh, this mountain church, we saw the fire coming, people being baptized, says Bishop Chege, we want to bring him here. Uh, and one woman was take, translated to heaven. So there are a lot of things people need to know. So I believe it's the time of restitution and restoration of all things. Wow. From September, we are going to see a lot of, many people need to be trained that Jesus could not preach without signs, wonders, and miracles. The Father was to come, who are we to, to go without? Because the church is becoming just like any other organization, competing with religion. The church is not a... Religion, in fact, is the forerunner for the kingdom. When Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That is not the end. Then I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. So I believe with all my heart, Dr. Henson, we need to preach about the kingdom more. Because when because the kingdoms of this world are becoming king, kingdom one of these days. And Daniel prophesied, Daniel 7, there's coming a time, and I believe we are getting those days, that all the dominion and the greatness of the whole earth shall be given back to the saints and they shall possess the king forever and ever. So I believe, yeah, the church has done good, the church is strong, but we need to see more church moving to the thinking of the kings that priestly anointing. Well, you're exactly right. And uh, you were in Kenya how many months then? Uh, I was in Kenya in uh, in January. I came here for two months. Then I went back in March. Then I went back in April. So uh, so I have just come back for two months. I was there. you were there in two months for two, for months, two months again. Yeah, because we are we are trusting God. This crusade, uh, Doctor Heiser, uh, evangelist, he said I need a hundred thousand, but to bring a hundred thousand is not easy anymore, because people in Kenya, you know, that we have crusade all the time. So we need to make it a difference. So I've been training uh, the upcoming preachers how to be enlarged and also how to move with miracles. So that's why you're calling glory revealed. Because I believe the time of Isaiah 40, where it says, those who have been high in the mountain, they need to come by. Those who have been low and crooked one, and all the fresh shall see the glory together. So I believe it's the whole church need to go to the next level. Amen. Yeah, uh, that's the whole point, ladies and gentlemen, of Eagle Saving Nations. Yeah, um, go to my website, worldministries.org. Worldministries.org. Yes, we are losing America. The republic is toppling. Uh, we have traitors within the government uh, pushing communism, and the only buddy that's going to stop it is the church. If the church doesn't stop it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. See, Jesus commissioned you and I to go and make disciples. We are His ambassadors. Like Apostle Joe said, uh, we are supposed to go and tarry until we're endued with his power Amen. to accomplish his will. Yes. And today, uh, the, most of the church doesn't care. They don't care. And consequently, they don't move with his power. And they are and called Pentecostal, but no Holy Ghost. They don't even pray in tongues. They don't move with his power. I'm not sure how many even know him, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. The church is pathetic. Yeah. Now, you can pray all you want. Jesus isn't coming out of heaven to save Kenya, to save America. Yes. He gave you and I that responsibility. That responsibility. We must lay this, this life. That's right. 
because it's Jesus Roma comes 7, back at the Battle of Armageddon. Yes. Other than that, you and I represent him. Yes. We're supposed is, to make disciples. He is bigger than when he was here, but because he, he's in Hansen, he's in me, he's in a little shoe like this. We cared. If you'll be allowed the moist, I have this young man. God has been using Victor. He called him Leverage Victor. He's 12 now. I think he got to 13. <laughs> oh, my God. He preached on Saturday. He was warning people. He said, you can smile good, but what you are saying is not true. He has a high discernment. So uh, if you come to my father's house, uh, Mike Delenso will be hosting him Saturday night. And also we are happy to tell people, our brother, who also is afraid. I, I, in fact, I open, I release him to start a church. Uh, through Apostle Martin called Apostle Charles. He is launching a new place and you are coming to dedicate it. So we are telling people, join us there. I, I like to sponsor, I like to, to, to bless people. And I know you listen to this telecast, so you are welcome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Dr. Hansen is one of those who will dedicate <laughs> the place here. Yeah. You tuned in, if you just turned on your radio or television set or social media, this is a warning program. Uh, my special guest, apostolic leader Joe Moniki. Uh, he just returned from Kenya, Nairobi, East Africa. We both have a concern over Kenya. We both have a concern over America. And we both go in and out of those nations. He was born and raised in Kenya. I've lived in Kenya uh, since 87 to 95. I live there. My children went to school there. Huh. And I've been there ever since as far as offices. Uh, going in and out for ministry, uh, helping people in different ways, whether it's helping to build schools and slums or water wells or dental clinics. We, we help in many ways, but primarily it's spiritually. I meet with leadership, government, and the top leaders of Kenya mm -hmm. because you can help all you want, yes. Joe, to, to give them food or clothing. Yeah. The point is, if we don't change the, the people, the government, if we don't change the hearts of the leaders in Kenya, our help doesn't matter. They will continue to be enslaved and impoverished and taken advantage of. We've got to change the hearts Amen. of leaders in Kenya. Joe? You know, 219, I went there to sack two governors. Okay. Because it's not just to warn them now. We are the representative of the kingdom of heaven. Yes. This, I don't want to mention their name, but I went to this place called uh, uh, Huru Gardens. It's called, the, yeah, it's Huru Gardens. And the law told me, because it's very bad, and this, we have it in Kenya. We, that's why you need to pray for our garments. The law told me very clearly in my ears that a corrupt leader is bad than a witch. Because a corrupt leader can take inheritance for your children's children. Because they'll take all the land, they'll take all the good places. So the Lord told me it's high time to warn them. And if they, do, they don't hear, sack them. Because we're coming back to the days of the prophets. The prophets, they were called father's father like Elijah. They were to, if, when God wanted to remove Saul, so he, he sent someone to anoint David. I know. Uh, it, it has not changed. God is yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same. Even he, how he worked those days and how prophets worked, we can work better. We have the Holy Ghost, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, they live in us. Well, I'll tell you, some of the leaders yeah. work through witches and yeah. witchcraft. Yeah. Bring them right into the state house and uh, work with them. Hmm. In many nations. They do that. They do that. I mean, you know it. Yeah, I know. And so, I mean, you, you call them, uh, they're worse than witches. Well, they use witches. Yes. Some of them. Yeah to get into power, to retain, yeah, to power, retain power, to control people. And so uh, we are in desperate times. We're in, actually, we're in spiritual warfare, and, and many people don't seem to understand it. Uh, we have principalities, powers of, in darkness, and we have to release heavenly hosts to the battle demonic forces, mm -hmm. but we battle evil men with the gospel, with truth. Yeah, with the truth. With the truth. The truth will set you free. And I believe, Dr. Hansen, the Bible says... The knowledge of his glory shall cover the earth as well as cover the sea. It will not just come with a Kubaya's message. I believe the kings and priests. And then not just that. I told people you were preaching about the throne room. I told them this is another training. That's why trainers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers. That was good to bring what? 
kings and priests, the sixth and the seventh. But also those, it's not the end, because Psalm 82 says that God laying in the comfort of the great. And he say, you are God, but you'll die like mere man. I don't know what to die, just a mere man, and just... We are his representatives, and his representative is to... And also another place, Paul said, we are his ambassadors. Not to cast people, we need to bless people, but we don't want to smear oil or the false corrupt leaders. We need to tell them, and also pastors who are corrupt. A lot of pastors who are corrupt are bishops and all that. It's too materialistic. Not that staffs are not good, but when we worship the staff, it just go back to the time of Daniel. Can we see a corrupt king who, after getting the biggest prophecy of what was about to happen, Nebuchadnezzar, rather to build the kingdom of God, he built a statue for himself. We have such leaders, even in the circle. We need to be careful. Are we building our statue or we are building the kingdom of God? Yep. Because this is a slippery floor, you know, and Peter said uh, in the last day there will be, you know, those be their buried, their God and all that. There. It's all of that. So it's not just political leaders, even the church leaders, we need to be careful. We need to warn without, with love, not cursing everybody, but anybody need to. So that's why I like this young man, maybe he need to come and you interview him. <laughs> young man, <laughs> also if you don't listen to this young man. <laughs> I'll bring He's him like, up yeah, here. Yeah. I'll, Joe, I'll, bring I'll, him up here. I'll interview oh, him. Oh, man, he, that young man is on fire. Oh, bring my him God. up here. I'll interview him. He was, um, he was, he was talking to us apostles on Saturday in a, in a place in Tacoma. I said, wow. Yeah, I, the Holy Spirit told me, if you don't hear, that's why the children in the book of Joel said, I'll pour out my spirit to all fresh. And it start with our sons and daughters. And your sons shall prophesy. They are here. Amen. I saw another one singing in the uh, American God Talent from Kenya. He's preaching to the whole world and the worship is, whew. It was, it's, it's in American God Talent. Just, just Google Kenya, <laughs> that young, another one. It's not this one. God is, we are in that. The Lord told me clearly, if you don't listen to these young people, they don't have a lot of experience and revelation and, and a lot of books in our head. They are just speaking what they hear. And when they finish the, 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 the preaching, they are young kids. Like now, this one has come with his, his mother, is an apostle, of course, sort of, because he is still a minor, 12, 13 years. So, the Lord, if you don't hear those kids, he's talking about holiness, how people need to be careful, not be hypocrites, because there's a lot of hypocrites in church today. Amen. They don't talk what they have in their heart, they talk. Just, oh, cool, you know, a smile, but it's not a smile. <laughs> so we need to be... <laughs> David, uh, Jesus hated the hypocrites than, than the sinners and her prostitutes. Totally. Yeah. If you just tuned in, once again, this is Dr. Jonathan Hansen, president of World Ministries International, as well as Eagle Saving Nations. Go to my website, worldministries.org, worldministries.org, and join Eagle Saving Nations. America is coming under tyranny by corrupt leaders, people that are in line with the one world order, the new world order, the elite, trying to, again, topple nations, topple sovereignties, topple the economy, uh, censor people's free speech. They're going into, again, a one world government is what they want to do. Only some nations will resist it if the church will rise up. Only the church can stop it. WorldMinistries.org, Eagle Saving Nations. We talked about, again, the importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's focused on. Get into the stadiums. Let the power of God once again touch the believers so they go out mm -hmm. without fear and intimidation, but they go out once again as Amen. warriors as to warriors. speak the truth. Truth takes away deception. Prayer brings conviction. We've got to have another great awakening. A big one. That's why for 35 years, is that at six, I've been preaching about the unity of the church of Christ by the Holy Spirit. I'm the, I don't like to say I'm the founder, but I'm the founder leader of me and Prophet Julius because I believe before the church, uh, Jesus come, the church must be one. We must speak in one voice because we are dealing with new world order. They are one. So unless church become one and speak with one voice, we are missing something because Jesus prayed for that in in. In John 17, and also Paul said, we must come to one faith, one unity, because I believe 
it's not the unity of churches. Me, I don't preach the unity. The church is one. We are one. And when we are one, the Bible says, the glory he has, it will be seen in us. Again, yes. ladies and gentlemen, worldministries.org, Eagle Saving Nations. This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen. You've tuned into the warning program. Special guest today, Apostolic Leader Joe Moniki, Nairobi, East Africa. I want you to make sure you tune into tomorrow's program mm -hmm. because it's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. As again, uh, there'll be four of us on tomorrow's program and uh, uh, the Tree of Hope. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, going right into what uh, Pastor Joe was saying, we have to have unity. We have to be, have one voice. We've got to have a great awakening. Yes. So, you know, you talked about earlier, uh, Joe, that, uh, you know, God is going to speak powerfully. And there's times then just like um, Ananias and Sapphira, yes. where the apostle uh, says, you've lied to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And people are going to fall over dead. Yeah. See, I believe that. I've been saying that. Yeah, I've been warning it. that th that day is coming. I, I warned somebody from Zambia mm -hmm. coming against a righteous pastor and, and a church that if you don't quit, God can take the breath out of your mouth. Wow. Now listen to this, Joe. He continued, and he fell over dead. Whew. They did an autopsy. Malaria hit the brain. Ladies and gentlemen, the days of Ananias and Sapphira are coming back. And it's God true. is going to use people with authority mm -hmm. to speak words. Warnings, judgment. Judgment. Joe? Joe? Yeah, you know, I was reading that Isaiah 66. It has a lot of things. People, they don't care the sacrifice they give to God. That's why it's powerful when he said, he live in heaven and we are his footstool here. If you allow him. We are his first rule because without a man like you being a one, how you have been doing the warning, sometimes we say, oh, no, oh, this is time of grace. I say grace came to help the laws to be fulfilled. You grace say, has always been, yeah. <laughs> always been yes. um, here, Old Testament, New Testament. Yeah, it has been there. I, so the you, only difference is in the New Testament, yes. Jesus, when he died on the cross, nullified mm. the law of sin and death, meaning... Our sin would send us to hell. Yes. Now, if we repent, we go to heaven. Now, that's the grace being fulfilled. Amen. But grace was in the Old Testament, or David would have never been king because he committed murder. He committed murder, and, uh, you know, and Isaiah 66, the Lord said, he'll test everybody with fire. So the fire, you may not see uh, like uh, how we saw in Maui, that was physical fire, but the fire, when you are one and you don't hear, there's that spiritual fire. And Isaiah also prophesied, it will not be like a fire you are warming before a, a jiko, but it will be spiritual fire. So there's no double checking. It's people, that's why there's baptism of the spirit, the fire. And some people even go through temptation. People get through trouble because they don't hear God. God put them through a test. So I believe it's high time we must be pure because even Paul put it clearly that every sacrifice shall be tested with fire. And even those who be f f saved, they will go through fire. So, so we must be pure because God is a, is a consuming fire. I believe it, Joe. Yeah. I, I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> you know, I go to the nations, give words of warning. God gives me a revelation, a prophecy. I speak it. It comes to pass. Next time you go to Israel, me. I want to go with you. <laughs> you know, you know I, I mean, just returned. I, this I, year I was in, in, in Israel, you know, in the Knesset. I, I know you told me that. that I've been there twice, but I want to go one, one of these times. Tell me not. But now I, I have, go every year. I have the American passport. Now we can go without... And I go, I go into the parliament. Amen. I don't like Again, to. I minister to top leaders. I was with world leaders for three days. Wow. In Israel. Yes. Again, God wants to bring a revival. Yes. Worldministries.org, worldministries.org. Join Eagle Saving Nations. Mm. This has been Dr. Jonathan Hansen with Apostolic Leader Joe Monicki. Yes. Tune in tomorrow. May God richly bless you. God bless you, everybody, and thank you for listening.